Hey, I'm Q. Welcome to my video. Today we are going to be learning uh, proportion and line quality. So grab your sketchbooks and a couple random objects from around your house to draw and I'll walk you through the process. We're just going to do a line drawing today, no shading, nothing fancy. Let's get going. Once you have your still life set up, you just set it up in front of you, just like you see here. I've got a cup and a cube, just some real simple objects. All right, I'm gonna start the cup with a center line because the object is symmetrical. So just so we keep everything the same on both sides, just a nice line that we'll, we'll erase that later. Now, as we're going through this, we're gonna act like the cup is see-through and we're going to draw through everything, which is an important concept in, in a lot of drawing that you do, drawing and painting. Drawing through for your preliminary sketches so that you make sure everything is where it should be. And when you're drawing circles, there are two axes you need to be concerned about, a vertical one and a horizontal one. And where your ellipse meets these axes, your line should be perpendicular, making a 90 degree angle right at those spots. Can you even see that? I should draw darker, huh, for you guys. I this ellipse on the top. Now I'm gonna draw this middle one. It goes all the way through, all the way around that ridge inside there. But I'm just going to act like it's glass and that we can see that entire ellipse. We know that that wall comes down, so we'll put that in so that we know where the edges of our ellipse are. And I know that that's the top of our ellipse. And I want to make it a little bit wider than this one. And we'll learn about that later when we learn about perspective, why that is. But I'm just going to measure real quick. That ellipse hits there, so I'm going to just make it a little bit wider. There's my center axes for that one, and we'll draw all the way through, just real lightly. Oh, I did not hit my axes there. Let me try that again. Ooh, that's better. Now draw with your shoulder. I'm not using a lot of my wrist. I'm just moving my, most of my arm is locked into place at this point. And I'm just using my shoulder to guide the pencil around the page. And you can make as many sketch lines as you want. This is just a sketch to get this object on paper where we want and the size that we want. Okay, now for the, that last one, we're gonna bring the edges of that cup in just a little bit and draw our last ellipse. And that, the axis of that is gonna be right on the edge, right where it starts to curve, is gonna be the horizontal axis of that one. And that looks like it hits just below, not quite on it, but just below. I'm looking right here on the edges, right here on either side, and seeing where those line up, making the relationship between the bottom of this edge and those sides. Proportion is all about relationship, whether that be the size of the object or the position of the object. There's lots of relationships in art. And that was totally wrong, let me try that again. I can't really talk and draw at the same time, this is no good. Because we want to go all the way up there with it, make that nice and wide because this one again is going to be a little bit wider than this ellipse. As we go down further from the horizon line we're going to be more of a circle and less of an ellipse. Bring this one down just a little bit more. Okay so there's the base for our cup. Now, when you're drawing through, it's called a construction drawing. Because we're just constructing and putting the building blocks down for 
what we want our art to become later. So I'm going to throw in the handle real quick. Now I'm looking at the relationship of the position of where this sits relative to the what I've already drawn. So I see that the center line of this cup has got a seam here that I can see that you probably can't see very well on the camera. That's hitting just a little bit above the axis. Axis? Axes? Looks like the center of that ellipse is right there, right on the edge where that handle starts. So we're going to come over here and put that in. I'm starting to sound like Bob Ross a little bit. Let's put, that, put in that happy tree, happy handles. And again, we're going to draw through. So I'll put this front edge in first. That comes in. I'm still looking at that relationship, seeing where that is in relationship to everything else I've drawn already. Now I'm looking at the distance from this edge to this back edge here and how that relates to what's around it. How wide is that piece? So I'm just going to eyeball it and guess that it's about that much. That looks about right. So I'm going to come over and follow that along. I'm constantly looking at my drawing and looking back at the reference. Look at the reference. Look at your drawing. Look at the reference. Look at the drawing. Back and forth, back and forth. Um, I actually saw a video. They had these special glasses that track your eye movement, and they had professional artists do a, a still life sketch, and then they had kids come in and do the same sketch, and they watched the difference in how children look at what they're drawing versus how artists do it. It's really interesting. Um, I'll have a link to that in the description if I can find it again. So we're going to go through and we're going to draw through all the way through that. To say that that comes around and around and this line comes around and down and hooks into the cup. We can even go through and say that it connects in right there on the side. Okay, so that does it for the cup, um, except one last thing, which is called the spatula principle. In drawing, you should make things, you should draw things thicker than they are to make them feel realistic, um, to give them visual weight. So I'm looking at the, the lip of this cup and it looks pretty thin, but we're gonna go ahead and draw that in a little bit thicker than what we see it just to give this cup some weight. And I'm not liking this line here, so I'm gonna flare that out a little bit before we do that. Let me darken up this line to really establish where we are with this edge. Okay, and this is where we get the spatula principle. We're gonna make that nice and thick, and even thicker on the edges. And as we go back away from the viewer, it's gonna get a little bit smaller, so that back edge we're going to make not so big and just connect that around. Now our cup feels like it it belongs, like a real object. Give it some weight. That's kind of sketchy, but we can always go back and, and touch up those small details and refine our drawing and render and do different things, but for right now, this is just a construction drawing. We're going to leave it simple. Okay, so let's go on to that cube. So we've got the cube back here. I'm looking at those relationships. I'm seeing this edge. I'll put my finger. Seeing this edge here and where it hits the cup. It's right there. About halfway between the center of this line here and the very edge of the cup. You know, about a quarter over is where that line is right there on the corner. And then I'm also going to look at where this bottom edge is in relation to the cup of what I've already drawn. So we can start the cube right about there. I'm going to have it come out right about. I can see that it's kind of in line with this inside lip, a little bit higher. So we put that in just at a little bit of an angle. Now I'm looking at the relationship between those two lines. So this is just a line. Imagine flattening out that image, even if you're looking at it in real time, in real space. Imagine that it's a 2D image that you're looking at. 
um, which is kind of difficult sometimes to forget three dimensions for a minute and just imagine that's a line instead of the edge of an actual object. So I'm looking at the length of that line and the length of this line down here and how long those lines are in relationship to each other. So I'm going to draw that one up and I see that they're pretty much the same. The bottom one is a little bit longer. I'm going to draw that one out to about there and then just go straight up from there. down. So now we have our first side of the cube. So now all we have to do is extend the four corners back and again we'll learn about more more about this when we cover perspective and we'll draw lots and lots of cubes when we learn about perspective. So now I'm looking at what I've drawn and I'm seeing that how this feels like a square is not coinciding with the other two sides. I feel like this is a little bit short. So I'm going to push that back a little bit. I'm looking at my reference and checking. And of course this is a GoPro so it's a little bit fish-eyed what you guys are seeing versus what I'm seeing. The angles are a little bit off, like these two lines here are supposed to be converging to the vanishing point, but they're not because this is a fisheye lens. I probably should have used a different camera for this. But what I'm seeing is that we need to push these lines back just a little bit so that it feels more like an actual cube instead of just a random shape. <laughs> kind of like a cereal box or some kind of rectangle. We want to make it square on all sides. So we'll just sure that up a little bit. It's the small details that bring it together. Good. Okay, so now talking about line quality. Now that we have our base of what our objects are going to look like, let's use line quality to really bring it to life. Now we're going to use thick and thin lines and hard and soft lines to emphasize depth in this drawing. Now if you guys remember a hard line has a clearly defined boundary. It's very sharp, very clear. A soft line or a soft edge kind of just blends out into to white or whatever that color is, you know, depends on color. But it's very very soft, kind of a gradient from black to white. Soft, soft, soft. I always think of I tell my students, think of a soft fluffy bunny and it really helps if you say soft, soft, soft while you're doing this. You're just like, oh, soft, 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 Very good. Soft line. And then we also have thin and thick lines, the weight of the lines. We're going to have really thin lines the further back the object is from us and we're going to have really thick, heavy lines the closer it is. Okay, so we're going to have, and then combining these two, so close to you close to you is hard and heavy the two H's and then far from you far from the viewer is going to be soft and light or thin you can call it thin too so let's apply that to our drawing right now so this cube back here, this is the farthest thing away, so let's erase that just a little bit and make those lines really, really thin. And we're gonna just rub our finger on them and soften them up a little bit, kind of make them blurry and get rid of some of that value. Make them lighter, okay? And then as the cube comes forward, we don't wanna go crazy with it because it's still pretty much in the background we're going to darken up the lines of that front edge that's a little bit close to us. Sharpen up those edges. Oh, and you know what I didn't do on this one? Was draw through. Gotta draw through on a construction drawing. Let me draw through there to show you the entire cube. There you go. Can you see that? Kind of. Okay, so we're going to keep going. So these lines back here, they're going to be just a little bit lighter. 
thinner. Get a nice gradient from thick to thin, back to front. And as we go along and add these details, this drawing is really going to come to life. And as we come forward, we're also going to get darker. Darker value with our lines. Just want to touch up this lip a little bit, make it a little bit more refined. Now this edge right here, the front edge, is the closest thing to us. So we're going to make that super sharp, dark, and heavy. Just add a lot of value. Press nice and hard. Don't be afraid to make it dark. That was one of my biggest problems when I started out drawing was never being brave enough to put a dark mark on my paper. All my drawings were really, really light. Too light. You could barely see them. Don't be afraid to just make it black. Nice and thick. This line too. We're going to make that nice and thick and hard. Sharp, clean edges. And then as we round that ellipse, we're going to get rid of some of that thickness and just let it go. Just let it be light. Make these nice and dark. Same thing with this edge here. We'll make that nice and dark and heavy. Just block it in. Find our drawing, we can use our eraser to clean up some of those edges. Hmm. Maybe that's a little bit too thick. Let's get rid of some of that. I went a little bit too, I was too excited. Refine that down, even that out a little bit. Now at this point we're trying to make these objects solid and the way they look in life. So we're not going to darken up our draw through lines. The sole purpose of those was to make sure that everything was in the right position and the right size. We want to make sure all our proportions are proper before we go through and darken up all our lines and make them permanent. So already we can see that the depth of this drawing has really come out. This feels a lot closer now than the cube, especially back here. This is super light and soft. You can even soften up these edges a little bit more. Just rub your finger over them and blend that lead out just a little bit. Make those edges soft. Erase some of that smudge. Sharpen up these lines. Let's fix this ellipse. It's kind of bothering me. Well, that's it for this week. I hope you learned a lot. Thanks so much for following along with me. Just keep on practicing, creating art, having fun with it. Next week, we're gonna learn all about bringing our drawings to life with value, shadows, lots of different edge quality, things like that. So I hope to see you next week. Ciao for now, guys.